we can start this lecture. I think uh, we discussed about um, uh, digital instruments. Is that not so? We discussed about digital recorders, digital recorders. So today, we want to continue from where we stopped. We discussed about digital recorders. If you check your screen now, you will see the notes where we stopped last time. I hope you can see that. Now today, we want to move on from there. We want to start from where we stopped. And now we are going to talk about, we are going to move on to chapter four. Chapter four. Digital and electronic instruments. Can you see it on your screen? So we are going to look at digital and electronic instruments. Here, we are going to talk about the principle of operation of digital instruments, such as voltmeters and so on. So the electronic instruments, generally speaking, we are talking of instruments such as voltmeters, ammeters, ohmmeters, and the rest. All of them generally use amplifiers. They use amplifiers, rectifiers, and other circuit elements. And that's what they use to generate a proportional uh, current to quantity that is being measured. Are you with me? They use amplifiers, rectifiers, to generate a current that is proportional to the quantity that is being measured. And this con uh, current is directed to a meta movement to indicate the quantity. Is directed to a meta movement to indicate the quantity being measured. Okay. Now, if the instrument uses a calibrated scale by means of a pointer, and the reading is being shown the pointer on the scale, then we call the instruments analog instruments. But if the instrument is showing the, the reading, the value of what is measured by means of uh, a digital readout, then the instrument is termed as a digital instrument. But whether analog or digital, both instruments are actually electronic instruments. And internally, they use the same principle to take the measurements. They use the same principle to take the measurements. But it is the display that is different. Both digital and analog instruments will work on the same principle of operation internally. We use amplifiers, amplifiers and some other few components to generate a current. And that current is applied to the meter that will read it. Now, if the meter is reading by means of a pointer and a scale, it's an analog instrument. But if the pointer is using uh, the readout is in digital form, then the instrument is a digital instrument. So let's go on to the first type of digital instruments. As you can see it on my screen now, the first type we are going to deal with is DC voltmeter with direct coupled amplifier. DC voltmeter with a direct coupled amplifier. If you look at the screen now, you will see this schematic diagram that we have here. That is this, the operation principle of the DC voltmeter with direct coupled amplifier. The instrument consists of an ordinary DC motor movement. What does that imply? The meter that is actually reading the measurement is actually in DC format. 
But DC move, move, uh, meter, motor movement is preceded by a DC amplifier of one or more stages. So if you look at the screen now, you will see amplifier here. You will see one with FET. Did you see the feed effect transistor here? And also you see a BJT here. Both of them, they are actually amplifiers. So we have one stage being FET, the other stage being BJT. So this is what precedes this meter here. You see the meter here that has arrow inside the, in the circle. So that meter is basically a DC meter. But before you take the current to the meter, the meter actually, uh, the, the current actually has been amplified by the stages of the amplifier that we have here. So in essence, we have basically two amplifiers feeding a meter movement. Now the input voltage, which is actually DC that we are going to measure, is applied to the input attenuator. If you look at this um, section of the circuit, we have certain resistors connected in series and they are tabbed in between. So we have a 9 mega ohm, a 900 kilo ohm, and 100 kilo ohm. This setup is referred, to, is referred to as the input attenuator. And that is where the DC voltage you are measuring is actually being applied. Now, when you apply the DC voltage here, it's applied to this combination of resistors, which is actually the input attenuator. Attenuator, and then we have a range selector. The range selector here, here will help you to select whether you are measuring 0.5 volts, 5 volts, 50 volts range. So you switch on the range selector to particular resistor that will be appropriate for that measurement. Now, when you do that, the input voltage is applied to the resistor, and the resistor now will relay a current. You know, when you have voltage applied to a resistor, current will actually flow through your resistor. So the current is being relayed to the first stage of amplifier, which is actually a FET, a feed effect transistor. A feed effect transistor, which is having one mega ohm uh, resistor as input to it. Now, this is one mega ohm resistor because the, the, the input to the amplifier, the, the, it has to be uh, high impedance so as to not become a, a, a cause a loading effect. On the device. So that is why we have one mega ohm uh, resistor here taking in the current to the first stage of the amplifier and the amplifier now takes the amplified voltage or current again to the BJT amplifier again before the output of the BJT taken from the emitter is now taken to the uh, meter movement where the measurements will now be read out on the meter. I think you see it now. So the feed effect transistor is connected to a source follower as a source follower. It's a source follower. And then it's directly coupled to an MPN transistor Q2, which is an emitter follower. So transistor Q2 forms a part of a bridge circuit, which now has the meter as part of it. There is a bridge circuit formed. If you take note, we have two resistors here, 2.5 kilo ohm, Another one, 2.2 kilo ohm, then 10 kilo ohm, and the emitter of the transistor here, you can see that it actually forms the bridge with the combination of the other two amplifiers. They form a bridge circuit so that the unknown value of current can be measured through the meter movement here. The meter here is, is, can measure up to 0 to 50 micro ampere DC. All right. So the Input voltage permits maximum voltage of 0.5 volts to be coupled to the gate of the N-channel feed effect uh, transistor. And then that one is perfectly connected without causing any distortion. The feed effect transistor is connected to a source follower and is coupled to the NPN transistor, which is actually a BJT. All right. So the brick circuit form with the a meter of the transistor, the Q2 transistor, BJT transistor, is actually taking the current to the meter movement. So the meter now displays the current that is being measured. Now take note of something. We are dealing with a voltmeter. We are dealing with a voltmeter. We are actually measuring voltage. But basically what the device does is to actually convert that voltage into a current and use the current to move a meter. 
but that meter will be calibrated to make metering voltage. Please mute your mic. Mute your mic. So the meter is now calibrated as measuring voltage, even though internally the meter is measuring current. The meter is measuring current. I think you get that. So the input impedance to this uh, device, to this meter, is about 10 mega ohm, which is sufficiently high to ensure that there's no possible loading effect. Loading effect. Gentlemen, if I may ask you, what is loading effect? You see the word loading effect now? I just highlighted it in red on the screen. So could you use your mic and tell me what you understand by loading effect? Loading effect. Can someone say something? What is loading effect? Can someone say something? Use your mic and talk, please. Who wants to talk? Let me see you so that I can unmute your mic. Mr. Away, you want to say something? Mr. Away, say something now. What is loading effect? Okay, it's just uh, it's like a process whereby the let's say for instance the uh, at the input that the security are trying to the device on that test is now presenting its load, it presenting itself as a load to the uh, how will I put it now to the, the input device that imagine. actually want to test it. The input you are yes. Is now yes. presenting itself as a load, which uh, is not supposed to be so. That's why the it's always advisable to have a very high impedance at the input of uh, the measuring device. device. Measuring device. You are right. Yes. You are so right. That, uh, That's very good. You are correct. So your measuring device itself should not become load. That is now drawing current from your voltage that you are measuring. If it does that, that is the loading effect. It's loading. It. It's not supposed to be for that reason. The input impedance of your device, the measure device, must be very high so that it will block the uh, the current, so that there won't be any current being drawn by the device that you are using to measure. I think you get that one. That is a um, uh, loading effect. Briefly, I just I like it. If you look at my notes, I made it right here. You know, loading effect. So that's the principle of operation of the first meter that we want to look at. That's DC voltmeter. DC voltmeter with direct output amplifier. Now, like I said, all of these devices they use the same principle internally with slight differences. Slight differences. So let's look at the second one that we're going to deal with today. That is DC voltmeter with chopper type amplifier. Chopper type amplifier. Now, here also we have something similar to what we had earlier, but with a little bit difference in application. So this is the a kind of blood diagram that represents the operating principle of the device. This is the blood diagram. Oh, sorry, let me plug this system. The I didn't I didn't remember to turn it on. Okay, so the power is now turned on. All right. So when you look at the screen now, you see the blood diagram of how the device works. This is a simple blood diagram that you people can sketch easily if you have been asked, you have been asked to do so. Now the DC voltmeter, the, the direct coupled amplifier that we checked up there suffers from a problem. That is drifts, it suffers from drift problem. Drifting, when it takes measurements, usually drifts. Now to avoid this problem, Another system is developed. That is the one that uses chopper type DC amplifier. So the DC voltmeter that uses chopper type amplifier is devised naturally in, uh, in, in order to, you know, overcome the problem that the ordinary DC voltmeter with direct output amplifier encounters. So in the chopper type amplifier, the input voltage that you are measuring, this input voltage is converted into an AC voltage. Gentlemen, are you with me? We are going to measure a DC voltage, but internally in the device, the device is going to work on AC first. 
So your DC voltage is being converted into an AC voltage internally. <coughs> How does it do that? It uses a kind of um, uh, uh, photodiode. You know, a photodiode senses light. And so you can actually convert a voltage into light also using a diode. So that when the, when the light goes on and off, it, in the, it now goes like a digital readout. If you look at the screen now, you will see a photodiode at the input here, where a low level DC input is applied, is applied and then the photodiode converts it to a square waveform. That is immediately after the photodiode, you see a square waveform. This square waveform is the- uh, Please mute your mic, mute your mic. <laughs> okay, bye bye. Man, I want to video screenshot. Let's do so. Uh, uh, yeah, so talk. Why I should communicate on video? So who is this man using uh, a go? I'll be solving the class with the noise in your place. Did you turn it on oh, again? Sorry, sir. I said it. You you still turn it on. Benny, I will pick you out of the class. Yes, <laughs> it's okay. Let's continue. All right. So let's go back to the notes. So I was trying to explain uh, the way this uh, device functions. So the photodiode at the input here converts the DC voltage into a square waveform. If I may ask you, square wave, is it AC or DC? Is it AC or DC? And gentlemen, uh, in about 10 minutes time, we, the, the free version we time us out, the free Zoom that we use, we time us out. So we will log in again, immediately it times out in about 10 minutes. So let's continue. Let's just bear it in mind. So I was asking, the square waveform, is it DC or AC? Square waveform, what do you think it is? Anybody want to say something? Anyway, let's continue. Let me tell you that a square waveform is actually AC signal. It is AC signal, it is not DC. So the photodial converts the DC input into a square waveform, which is actually AC. Then that signal is being fed to an AC amplifier. You see the AC amplifier here? The AC amplifier takes the signal and raises it up, raises up the strength, and you could see the square waveform after the AC amplifier is now higher in size, meaning that it has been amplified. And that is the first, uh, the, the, the principle of operation of the device. Now, after it has been amplified, the signal is converted back through another photodiode into DC again. You could see another photodiode at the output here. That one is taking the signal back to AC, I mean to DC rather. Internally, the device is taking the signal to AC, amplify the AC signal, then later on, converted it back to DC. After it is converted back to DC, it is now applied to a low pass filter. What does a low pass filter do? A low pass filter allows only very low frequency to get to the output. Anything with higher frequency will be blocked off. So there is no AC portion of the signal that can get to the output. It's only the DC level that gets to the output. And that is what is going to be measured at the output. The amplified DC signal is now applied to a meter, and then you get um, the measurements of the voltage, although in an amplified manner. Fine. The low level DC that you are measuring is amplified then somebody could ask a question that, okay, are we not going to get error in the results when it's being measured outside? What do you think, gentlemen? Are we not going to have errors in the reading outside since the signal has been amplified before it's taken to the output? Who wants to say something? Does anybody want to say something here? Yes, sir. Very sir. Okay. What do you want to say? Say something. Afolabi, we are not hearing you. Maybe your, your network is poor. 
Okay. Okay. Let me continue. After the, I think we should set the, the kind of uh, frequency converter that reduces the frequency. And from, I think, from my experience or what we've read, I think DC, um, DC, any signal in DC doesn't have a frequency. That so, which why. frequency is uh, the low pass filter? Yes, that allows the DC to pass. And no AC can pass across it. Because DC is almost zero frequency. So, DC will, will get out of that filter. But anything AC will be blocked. That's the way the filter is designed. That's a low pass filter. Now, my question is, if the signal has been amplified through that amplifier that we saw, and then you now take the amplified output in DC form to a meter to read it out, the question is, are we not going to get error there? And the answer is no, we are not going to get error because the meter must be calibrated. Are you there? The meter must be calibrated. So it is calibration that takes care of that. But the reason why it's been amplified is for it to be enough the current should be enough to drive the meter itself. If it is not enough, then the meter will not move. So it has to be amplified before it's taken to the meter. But yeah, it's not going to give us error for the fact that the meter is going to be calibrated. It's going to be calibrated with a standard meter. So when it's reading one, the standard meter should also read one. So that is it. Now, if you look at the, the, the screen again, I've, I've come back to the notes. We see an oscillator that is driving two neon lamps into illumination on alternate half cycles of oscillation. The oscillator is driving them into alternate half cycle of oscillation, meaning that in one half cycle they will be on, turned on, in another half cycle they will turn off. And that is how that photodiode can actually convert the DC signal into AC because it's going to work on, off, on, off. And likewise, also the one at the output. Is going to convert the signal back to DC using a reverse process. Using a reverse process. So the, the photodiode, they are now kind of synchronized together with the neon bulb. It is the neon bulb that is energizing them by shining light to them. You know, photodiode operates based on light. When it receives light, then it operates, it produces an output. That light will forward bias the PN junction. So it is when the light comes in, there is all bias and it produces an output. When there is no light, then there is going to be off. So the output of the photodiode will be on, off, on, off. And that is what we have in form of a square waveform. Square waveform that you can see here. On, this is on. The off is air, the on again, the off, and the same thing goes air like that. So the photodiode synchronized uh, is being synchronized. The, the, the four photodiodes here, they are being synchronized by the oscillator. The oscillator is producing neon uh, bulb. It's, it's shining light through the neon bulb to the photodiode. So they are like switch that is taking the signal on, off, on, off, on, off, making it to become AC signal instead of the DC that it was. Now, the input to this amplifier is a square wave, like I have explained, and the amplitude is proportional to the level of the input voltage at a uh, frequency of the oscillator, frequency of the os oscillator. But the signal is converted back, it's demodulated by the photodiode at the output. It's converted back to DC, and then this, this output voltage taken to the filter, and it, uh, anything AC will be removed by that filter anything AC, even if it is 2x in frequency, that, that uh, low pass filter will block it away, allowing only DC to pass. So the DC output is what uh, is now being used to apply to the meter. I think we get that. So that is that. That is the, uh, the principle of operation of uh, that one. Uh, quickly, we want to move on to the AC voltmeters using rectifiers. AC voltmeter using rectifiers. Now, let me also ask one question here. That's a small question that we all know answer, answer to. Now, what do, we, what do we use rectifiers for in electric circuits? What do we use rectifiers for? Anybody? Somebody want to talk? Use your mic and, and say something. 
What do we use rectifiers for? Can you hear me? Yes, sir. Okay. Say something. Rectifier is used. Uh, rectifiers are used to convert uh, AC voltage, AC or pulsating voltage into direct current uh, voltage uh, levels. Okay. So by simply, you know, remembering that point that I just mentioned, you will now realize that the AC voltmeters using rectifiers, they are actually going to work internally as DC meter. Because they are going to rectify the voltage that is coming from outside. First of all, they are going to rectify it into DC. It is the DC that they work with internally. You see the beautiful thing there? So that is just to give you an idea. Even if um, you have read the entire note and then they start looking confusing. This is the area where you are going to you know, identify each one, what is what, which is which, out of all these um, devices. So the one we are going to deal now, deal with now, it says AC voltmeters using rectifiers. Now, another interesting thing is that there are others that work as DC and there are others that work as AC. Okay. They are basically like the DC voltmeters, only that the AC input voltage must be rectified first. That's the first step. You rectify the voltage into DC. Then you now use the DC, manipulate the DC inside amplify, do whatever you want to do, and apply it to a meter. And then the meter is working as a DC meter. Now you now calibrate that meter to do measurement as your AC voltage. So in the 